Light yourself on fire, Jesus is back. That's Jesus talking? Jesus just got a blue check mark? How did he get verified? He only has 12 followers. FX's latest sci-fi miniseries from the writer-director of Ex Machina is a mind-bending thriller that asks the question, can Nick Offerman play a serious role? You're literally listening to turkey calls. Is this, is this not rap? In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the ending and explain some of its most unanswered questions. So log into the system because here we go. The very first shot of the final episode is of the crashed capsule. We aren't sure what's really happened yet as this particular scene occurs near the end of the episode. In essence, we're seeing a glimpse of the future, just like Forrest and Katie use the devs machine to see the future. This technique of showing images of future events at the start of the episode Episodes occurs several times throughout the series, like in episode 2 where it briefly shows us the fight between Anton and Kenton that hasn't yet happened. Set against the intro we have Stuart reciting William Butler Yeats's poem The Second Coming, which uses Christian imagery regarding the apocalypse and second coming to describe the atmosphere of post-war Europe. In Devs, however, it describes the atmosphere of Devs' destruction and the death of its creator. But as we'll find out later, Devs looks as though it's seemingly destroyed, but with it comes resurrection. If you're watching the last episode a second time, you'll notice this introductory shot of Forrest here is him post-death, being within the system, and the image of his daughter running through the field is the one we later see her in at the end of the episode. Rewinding 30 minutes, Lily arrives at Devs to confront Forrest. In episode 7, we learn that Forrest gave Lily permission to bypass security and access the hub. That's because he's seen the future and knows what's going to happen. Even if that future shows his own death, Forrest is powerless to stop it. That's because he's a firm believer in determinism. In philosophy, determinism is the idea that all events, including moral choices, are completely determined by previously existing causes. Nothing ever happens without a reason. Everything was determined by something prior. In other words, we have no free will. That's why when Forrest confronts Sergei about stealing his source code, he tells him he's not mad. You made no decision to betray me. You could only have done what you did. Force wants to believe so badly in determinism because it would absolve him of the guilt he holds for the deaths of his wife and child. He kept his wife distracted on the phone while she was driving, which resulted in her deadly car crash. If there is no such thing as free will, then he can't be to blame for their deaths. I think Debs is how you've put yourself on trial. It's judge and jury. If it works, Determinism precludes free will, and you're absolved. You did no wrong. But if it doesn't work, you had choices, and you're guilty. This is why, in episode 4, Forrest fires Linden. Linden applied a code that used American physicist Hugh Everett's Many Worlds theory in order to get a crystal clear audio recording of Jesus Christ. But the Everett theory, which basically states that there are infinite worlds where people make infinite choices, flies in the face of determinism. It means the universe is constantly splitting, like the trunk and branches and twigs of an infinitely large tree. And on that tree, all possible worlds will exist. In essence, the application of Linden's code proves that free will exists, thus Forrest was responsible for the death of his wife and daughter. Knowing this, it becomes clear as to why Forrest fired Linden, when in any other world, Linden would have been given the Nobel Prize. As a side note, the actor who plays Linden is female, even though the character is referred to using male pronouns. It just so happens Alex Garland, the writer-director, had a certain look in mind for this character, and a woman just happened to fit the bill. Moving along, Forrest tries to make sense of this discussion by stating that yes, they heard Jesus, but it wasn't their Jesus. By taking all this data from supposedly many universes, it does not recreate the exact Jesus that was the one that lived in their history. If it's not our Jesus, it's not my Amaya. Lily joins Forrest in the theater room with a feeling of helplessness. She feels that she's not in control of her own life. I don't know what I am anymore. Something that makes no decisions, has no choices. Forrest understands because the feeling of participating in life is just an illusion. Life is something we merely watch unfold. He says, Determinism may be strange, but it's also beautiful. 
Forrest explains that once you understand the state of one particle, you can understand the state of the ones around it, until eventually you know everything. Throughout the season, we've seen this experiment of a mouse surrounded by different objects. In episode 5, we see the first time the dev's employees conduct this experiment to see if they can simulate what happened to the mouse in the past. By using these objects, examining their particles in relation to one another, they can get an image of the mouse back in time. Forrest tells Lily that he knows she's holding onto Kenton's gun, something he could only know if he had looked into the future. If this machine really has the power to do that, then Lily wants to see what's in store. In the simulation, we see Lily take Forrest at gunpoint toward the capsule. Her plan is to take him to the statue of Amea and kill him, the same place where Sergei's burnt body was left. Lily tells him that these tech leaders believe they're messiahs, but Forrest fires back. You know what happens to messiahs, don't you? They get resurrected. And that's exactly what will later happen to both Lily and Forrest. In fact, they're the only two characters who get these halos around them similar to the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Lily ends up shooting Forrest, causing the capsule to crash and Lily to ultimately die. At least that's what this simulation says will happen. Back in real time, Forrest explains that Devs isn't the actual name for the project. The V in Devs is actually Latin, which the Romans pronounced as the letter U, making Devs actually Deus, the Latin word for God. Although it was meant as a joke, it really implies that Forrest sees himself as a god. Lily takes Forrest out at gunpoint, just like the simulation predicted she would. However, instead of shooting Forrest, she throws the gun away before the doors to the capsule close. She has proven the simulation wrong, and that she does have free will. You know the thing about messiahs, don't you? They're false prophets. Stuart, however, has different plans. He disables the electromagnetic field holding up the capsule and it smashes to the ground, killing Lily and Forrest. He did it because his character believes such a machine shouldn't exist and that it needed to be stopped. A change of character from the Stuart we saw earlier in the series. This change began with the firing of Lyndon, and I'm sure when Lyndon sought him out and said this, it helped too. He's obsessive, he kills people, and he's trying to resurrect his daughter. Do you really want something as powerful? Falls devs in the hands of someone crazy. Stuart begins to see Forrest and the Devs Project in a different light, even saying in episode 7, Such big decisions being made about our future by people who know so little about our past. When Katie asks him why he did it, he makes a joke, saying not to blame him, it was predetermined. Now there is a theory that Lily's choice of throwing the gun doesn't matter at all. Check out these two shots of Stuart and the screen to his left. One of them is from the simulation, and the other is of reality. Yet the screen is the same, having been programmed by Stuart to disable the electromagnetic system on both. This theory states that it doesn't matter whether or not Lily throws the gun out or not, Stuart will still disable the system, killing Forrest and Lily. This theory would also mean that the world is still deterministic. But I want to hear your comments below on what you think. Forrest wakes up in the theater room, although this time he is the one being projected. Katie has uploaded all his memories, data, everything leading up to his death into devs. The reason Katie and Forrest couldn't see beyond the date of Lily's death was because she made a choice. Forrest calls it the original sin, disobedience. Just like Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden fruit going against the laws of God, so too did Lily make a choice that deviated from his plan. Katie informs Forrest that the system is now all-knowing, but only when using Lyndon's principle. She needs to know if Forrest understands this. It would mean that he was wrong, that there is no such thing as determinism, that he did have some responsibility for the death of his family. But it also means there is hope for resurrection, in a world where he can live the rest of his days within one of these worlds. Lily, however, wakes up next to Sergei on the same day as episode 1. Everything has been reset to this day, but she has the knowledge of everything that happened up to her death. She knows about Sergei's secret Sudoku app, for example. You may even have caught a glance at Lyndon and Stewart, who are happily having a conversation on campus. She goes in search of Forrest, ironically enough through a forest, and sees him reunited with his wife and daughter. In this world, they did not die. Forrest tells her that she has her life back, that the two of them have been resurrected. We are now living in many worlds. 
In this world, the two of us get to live in paradise with the ones we love. Lily isn't sure what to do with her life now, and Forrest says she can follow her own path, something he never would have said at the beginning of the series. In the real world, however, Lily and Forrest are dead. As chief operating officer of Devs, Katie has taken control and has done something Forrest never would have done. Let the senator in on what Devs really is. If you remember from episode 3, the senator visited Forrest in an attempt to learn more about Devs trying to recruit the program so that it can be used by the NSA. Forrest, however, couldn't care less about using devs to help others, not for patriotic reasons or, as he tells Kenton, to combat climate change. Forrest cares about one thing only, being with his family. And that's exactly why Katie goes to the senator. Although it's never fully explained, Katie needs the senator in order to keep devs running. This could mean she needs help financially or legally. Because if devs is disabled, she'll lose the person she loves, Forrest, just like Forrest would do anything to protect the project, that includes murder, so too does Katie do what she needs to do in order to keep Forrest alive. Forrest the Observer has now become the Observed. Perhaps Katie may one day have aspirations of also being reunited with him. The final scene, however, is between Lily and Jamie. With her restart, Lily is able to forge her own path and make her own decisions. This means she can be with the one she cares about most. With their knowledge of Sergei being a spy and the lengths to which Jamie went to protect her, she has made the decision to patch things up with him. Something that didn't go over too well when she tried to use him in episode 1 to crack her missing boyfriend's phone. Lily will ditch Sergei, as she says to Jamie at the end of episode 6, I didn't know him. I know you. So stay in my bed. At its core, Devs isn't a story about solving a murder, it's the story of what it means to be human. Are we slaves to a deterministic world where everything is predetermined by cause and effect, or do we have free will? Is there one world where everything plots a course on a singular tram line, or are there multiple worlds, like a tree branching out infinitely into the universe? In the end, it's up for you to decide. Thanks for watching everyone, please be sure to like and subscribe, and leave your thoughts and theories in the comments below. You can also follow me on Twitter at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.